for the privilege of being in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We do ask him for a specific encounter today. Via his word and the mercy of the anointing oil. I want to see you, Jesus. I desire an encounter of a lifetime with you. Let my word come today. Cause my ears to hear from you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Performance in any venture will never, never be above the preparation that goes into it. Performance in any examination will require some good degree of preparation. And so it is with any event in life. How well prepared we are will determine the outcome of any venture that we embark on. Our ministry has its foundation in 28 month long um, prayer and fasting chain to launch into it and it shows. Preparation, no substitute. You don't prepare for Shiloh, you come out just the way you went in. Jotham became great because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Somebody that was preparing his own sacrifice before Shiloh and he came on ground, God said, no, this is what you must do. He obeyed. And within one month, the heavens over his heart, head opens. Preparation. I started putting down my notes in April for Shiloh. Shiloh is done. I started putting on my notes in April for an event coming up in December. So you wonder why heavens come down at every shield. Preparation. Preparation. Have I ever been in any meeting in 38 years without prepared notes? I may not look at it, but it's there. Please prepare yourself to meet thy God. Shiloh 2019 will be a landmark Shiloh. Amen. For you. Amen. You'll never be an onlooker. Amen. But a full partaker of heaven's visitation. Amen. Prepare your heart. Prepare your person. Wash your clothes. There is no shallow without some outstanding. We've never seen it in this fashion kind of visitation. <laughs> you must have your own this time. Amen. 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 Grace for adequate spiritual preparation. Physical preparation for Shiloh 2019. Lift up your two hands and receive it. Come on, I'll receive it. I receive grace for adequate preparation that will guarantee maximum impact for me as a person at Shiloh 2019 I receive that grace now at the end of every seven years thou shalt make a release now Shiloh 2019 is the third seven year 
of Shiloh, the 21st Shiloh. Now, I must have my release into a world of no limits at Shiloh 2019. I must have my release into a world of no limits at Shiloh 2019. So help me, Jesus, to be adequately prepared to be spiritually set in all areas. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, thank you for what is in stock for each one at Shiloh 2019. Amen. Let no one miss his own package. Amen. Lord, baptize everybody at Shiloh this year into a world of no limits. Amen. Let things that eyes have not seen or ears heard become the order of happiness in everyone's life. Amen. And let that be for life. Amen. Let that be for life. Amen. This morning, Lord, meet everyone at the point of their need. Amen. Let this Priscilla anointing service make a difference in everyone's life. Amen. Let every yoke of ungodliness be destroyed by the anointing. Amen. And let your name, O Lord, be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, I have dominion. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. Again, you are welcome into God's presence. Be full of expectation. And God will turn and convert everyone's expectation to full-blown manifestation. Amen. Whatever you desire out of this service today shall be delivered in your hand, Amen. and the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The prophetic theme for the month is godliness is profitable unto all things. Can we say that together? Amen. One more time. And he said it has the promise of the life which now is, is profitable in the now, and is profitable in the hereafter. Is pro profitable for the now and profitable for eternity. Godliness has this two front profitability available to us in the kingdom. So a choice to lead a, a, a godly life and makes us all run profitable in life. My prayer is that the profiting of godliness will continue to be made manifest in our lives as individuals. In the name of Jesus Christ. We've been looking at this uh, subject in our teaching series for our Sunday services. Godliness empowers believers for all run profiting. All run profiting empowers believers for all round profiting. Every aspect of our life is imparted by godliness. The pursuit of godliness guarantees breakthroughs in all areas of life. It may be slow, but it's sure. And it's better to be slow and sure than to be fast and full. It may be slow, but it's sure. And it's better to be slow and sure than to be fast and fall. It took 13 years. It looks very long for Joseph to see the fulfillment of God's plan for his life. But he enjoyed it for 80 years. He died at 110. He was enthroned at 30. He went through some gruesome experience for 13 years. He became a slave at 17, but ascended the throne at 30. It may be slow, but it's sure. It may be slow, but it's sure. In all these things, Job did not say with his mouth. In all these challenges, and Job came out of it. 
and lived for 140 years more and became twice as great as he was before. I mean, <laughs> in all this thing, Job did not say with his lips. He maintained his stand with God in spite of the challenges of his life. And Job had twice as much as he had before. And he lived for 140 years to enjoy his restoration. It may be slow, but a sure. Please, be committed to a quality walk with God. People may laugh you to scorn today, they will celebrate you tomorrow. <laughs> be committed to a quality walk with God. Be very personal about it. Don't be grieved at your mockers. They can't see what you see. But let me start this one when it's time I'll close. <laughs> Godliness is warfare. Can I hear you say with me, Godliness is warfare? Godliness is not just a choice. Yes, it becomes a choice. But we must engage in warfare to secure it. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 to 4 shows us how godliness is warfare. We are for saying that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin which does easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is now set at the right hand of majesty of the throne of God. For consider him who suffered such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Now, verse 4, that's where the warfare is. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Warfare, battle. Your choice to live a godly life is warfare. You don't see it as warfare, you lose the battle. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Resist the devil and they will flee from you. That's warfare. Give no place to the devil seeking a place around you. That's warfare. Now let's go down to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Oh, that man of God, flee these things, but <laughs> follow after righteousness. Godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith to make this happen. You engage in a fight to follow after godliness. You know, 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12. You engage in a fight of faith. Fight of faith. So you can lay hold on eternal life so you can overcome ungodliness and lay hold on eternal life, on eternal life, on eternal life. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? He said, don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. So we can lay hold on eternal life 
without putting up a fight of faith. Come and say a fight of faith. So living a godly life is warfare. It's not I've tried. You must overcome. I've tried doesn't, it's not the answer to the question. <laughs> Amen. Now if you check through Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. To him that overcometh. Verse 11. He that overcometh. Verse 17, he that overcometh. Verse 26, he that overcometh. Revelation 3, verse 5, he that overcometh. You see, it, it's <laughs> to overcome means to engage in a warfare and you had the victory. You can't live an overcomer's life without putting up a fight. You can't live, I can't live the overcomer's life without putting up a fight, a fight. And it's a fight of faith, a fight. A fight of saying this is what God said and this is the truth and I'm not shifting my ground. You set out, you cannot penetrate, you can't intrude into my life. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. That's the fight of faith. Holding the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the Lord, and confronting that devil. Jesus said, it is written. Satan went back. Second time, it's written. He shrugged. He shrugged. It is written. He fled. He engaged the sword of the spirit to floor the opposition. You wait. You waste. You watch. You are wrecked. We must put up a fight to live the overcomer's life and lay hold on the reality of eternal life in the now and in the hereafter. So it means godliness is warfare. We have to see it as warfare. We have to respond to it as warfare. We have to react against ungodliness as a soldier of Christ. Praise God. How many want to make heaven here? Let me see your hands up. Then we must fight that good fight of faith to subdue ungodliness. To conquer ungodliness. To emerge an overcomer. We must put up that warfare. Thank you, Jesus. You know the way we fight when sickness knocks on our life. Why? We know the price has been fully paid for our total health. So we engage the world to fight back. In the same way, sin lost dominion over your life. That does not mean sin will not come knocking. By says we why he, the devil knows that, yet he comes to check whether you know it or not. And then you show that you do by reacting against his intrusion. In the same way, we have been redeemed by the blood, the devil knows. But he wants to check how much of it you know. And when he comes against you and you just look, he puts a rope on your neck and drags you to wherever he wanted. And that's the end. Behold, I have given you Sihon, the Amorite. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24 and his land. I have given you. But begin to possess it as you contend with him in battle. So your inheritance is under contest from the pit of hell. My inheritance is under contest from the pit of hell. But our timely reaction will go a long way to establish our liberty. Now, 
I'm going to be alive to hear testimonies of people in this church who will say, I've been 50 years free from sickness and disease. Amen. And I'm going to hear testimonies of people who will say, 50 years has come and gone. Satan has nothing in me. Amen. If you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That's the only way we can meet in heaven. That's the only way we can meet in heaven. Don't be deceived. Ungodliness is a master disqualifier for heaven. Strong membership of a church is not a qualification. Preaching the hottest message in the world is not a qualification. Leading much to the kingdom is not a qualification. You just must be godly. We have done many great things. I know you know, you workers of inequity. I know you know what you have done is relevant. Who you are is more important. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that no one under the sound of my voice today will miss his place in heaven. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, <coughs> He said, the great door and effectual is open unto me, but there are many adverse. They will not overcome you. Yeah. You will overcome them. Yeah. Quickly, on the subject of consideration for the month, we're trying to unravel the forces of ungodliness we must have to overcome. This morning, we're looking at two of them, the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit of the wisdom of God, that we might know the things that are given to us, freely given to us by God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, 1 Corinthians 2.12, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So there is the spirit of the world. First John 2, 15 and 17, let's find out what that spirit works, how it works and what it does. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So what the Spirit of the world works include the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we must understand that it's what they call the spirit of the world. And when some Christian misbehaves, it's too worldly. What to mean is that it's ruled by the spirit of the world. The loss of the flesh connotes all manner of sexual perversions. The loss of the eyes is all about covetousness that make glutons never satisfied, never enough, always wanting anything and everything and at all costs. At all costs, mostly unrighteous costs. At all costs, taking advantage of anybody, including their father and their mother, <laughs> their brothers and sisters. And then the pride of life. 
this great kingdom which I've built by my might for the majesty of my kingdom to show how powerful I am in the world. <laughs> and while the word was in his mouth, was still in his mouth, it was turned to an animal. The pride of life. How do we conquer the spirit of the world? By the spirit of God. It takes the spirit of God to conquer, to subdue, to destroy the oppressions of the spirit of this world in our life. You can't love anything perfectly and not hate the opposite perfectly. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, man with a heart for God, do I not hate them that hate thee? David said. He said, I hate them with perfect hatred. Psalm 139, verse 21 and 22. You can't love something perfectly and not hate the opposite perfectly. God is love. And the Bible said in prophecy concerning Jesus, he loves righteousness and hated wickedness. You can't be loved and tolerate wickedly, wickedness. Amen. When you see anybody clapping for wicked people, they are also wicked. They are wicked. You see anybody just shouting down on the wicked, there is love in his heart. So, the spirit of love which is the spirit of the love of God born in our heart is the cure for the oppressions of the spirit of the world. I therefore decree the liberty of everyone here today by craving a baptism of the spirit of love upon their life. Amen. God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So with the spirit of love at work in us, it destroys the love of the world in our life. So the spirit of the world we subdue and submit itself to the authority and power of the spirit of love. Therefore, receive right there where you are seated a fresh baptism of the spirit of love upon your life. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The second one, which is almost covered by this, is the spirit of pride. The spirit of pride. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God resists the proud, but he gives more grace unto the humble. James 4, 6. One way to remain clothed with humility is to recognize that there is nothing you have that you have not received. Everything of value around your life and my life is purely an expression of the grace of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For who maketh thee to differ? And what? from another, and what hast thou that how thou hast not received? Now, if thou didst receive it, 
Why do you glory as if you accomplish it on your own? There is nothing around your life that's of value and around my life that is not of grace. It's all of grace. The breath in your nursery and in my nursery is all of grace. So every other value added to it comes through grace also. What have you? He said a man can receive nothing except to be given him from above. Can receive nothing. So everything of value in your life and my life, they are all as received. That's where the humility comes from. You must know that. You went to school, yes. How many went there and came out? How many went through their first year before they disappeared? Before they gave out the ghost? How many children died the day you were born in the same hospital? How did you escape? You fought? We, we just must go down to think. Nobody can make himself. Can anybody give back to himself? We are what we are and we have what we have all by the grace of God. Please calm down. You are not an achiever. You are a product of grace. Calm down. It's not your power, it's not your might, it's not your skill, it's not your strength that brought you where you are. You are a product of grace. That you humble anybody, anytime. We have this treasure in other vessels that the excellence of glory might be of God and not of us. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. So everything that is of value in your life and my life, there are raw proofs of the grace of God at work in our life. How many will lift up their right hand and give God glory for who you are and where you are and what you have? Give God the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Everything of value around my life is all of grace. Everything of value around your life is all of grace. For the great and I'm what I am by the grace of God. It is grace that makes great. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is what makes all the difference. Please take a proper covenant position if you want to live a godly life. You are not an achiever. You are not where you are by reason of your skills. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. It's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Therefore, keep humbling yourself around the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. You don't change level without humility. And Moses was very meek above all men that were on the face of the earth. Numbers 12.3. And Moses was very great. Exodus 11, 3. Very meek, very great. Nobody's destiny will ever be greater than his meekness. God certified meekness, not walking quietly on the street. Satan was still worshiping God as the head of the cherubims. And then, but his heart was lifted up within himself. It's a matter of the heart. Yes, it has expressions on the outside, but it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. That my son who gave testimony, I've never seen him with my eyes. I've never spoken to him in my life. The greatest things in this church that happen as testimony are not 
from people that you have personal contact with. They just line up with God. And God just manifested himself in their lives. That's all you need. It's all of the heart. God is looking to the heart. Whether you humble yourself under him or he knows him. He said, I said, don't know. I look into the heart. I'm not like a man that looks on the face. May God find humility and meekness in your heart at all times. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How do I overcome ungodliness? Be sensitive to everything that displeases God in your heart and in your environment. Be sensitive. He said, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary devil is going about looking who to destroy. We have to be sensitive. We have to be sensitive to everything that displeases God in and around our lives and take over. He that keepeth himself, the wicked one touches him not. And take cover. Whatever is born of God, sinned not, but <laughs> he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. I stated in 2002 that no matter how skillful a soldier, if he's not vigilant, he will be a victim. No matter how skillful, you are not vigilant, you end up a victim. No one can live the overcomer's life without being sober and vigilant, without being sensitive to every ungodly notion within himself and in his environment and take cover on the spot. The wicked one will not pry into your life anymore. To engage the name of Jesus to dispel every gang up of hell as they rear their ugly heads in your thoughts and in the notions of your flesh. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. Every time you sense any movement of hell around you in the name of Jesus, don't say it inside, say it outside. The strangers shall hear and they shall fade away from their hiding places. They can't hear what is in your heart. It's only God who can hear what is in your heart. The devils can't hear what is in your heart. You have to say it out. In the name of Jesus, get off my mind now. Get off this environment now in the name of Jesus. And he gave him a name above every name that had the name of the Lord Jesus. Every nation should bow of things in heaven, things on the earth, <laughs> and things on the earth. Every other name bows to that name. So when you come out with the name of Jesus, loaded with faith, you scatter the gang ups of hell. In the name of Jesus, no devil takes you for a ride anymore. Yeah. There was this testimony of a young man that was involved in the uh, sea or boat hazard in Niger Delta area. And as the boat capsized, it poured all of them into the water. <laughs> he said, Jesus! I refuse to die. And then a hand came down and held his hand above the water and took him to the safety boat, left him there, and disappeared. 
Jesus! No! 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 Jesus! You are not only sensitive, you are engaging the appropriate weapons. In my name you cast out devils. You devil, I cast you out of my mind in the name of Jesus. I cast you out of this environment in the name of Jesus. You do it as a fighter. Not in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. <laughs> no gentleman returns from the war front. <laughs> Amen. In the name of Jesus, all the demons will shiver. For they shall hear and fade away from their hiding places. They don't hear, they won't fade. They will be hanging there. I said, This boy doesn't know what he's doing. We will deal with him today. I said, In the name of Jesus, clear as the way. No one here shall be a war prisoner. Let me tell you this. Every provision has been made for us to be holy. All we need is take responsibility to enforce our inheritance of holiness in Christ. Be ye holy for I am Beings have made adequate provision for you to be if you choose to be and will take responsibility to be. And Jesus came and put on top of it, Matthew 5, 48, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly father is perfect. And he brought us into that because the Bible said, Jesus speaking said, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. And Jesus said, which of you convinces me of sin? John 8 and 46. So, <laughs> by redemption, we are equipped to live a holy life. All we need as a choice for it and taking responsibility to realize it. In the name of Jesus, no one will miss his place in eternity. Amen. So we are engaging in a fight to see that inheritance established. Amen. Amen. To live like Jesus. To conquer sin like Jesus has conquered it for us. May the encounter of today open a new chapter to everyone's life. Yeah. I pray that many of us we graduate from sonship into friendship with God. Yeah. Many of us, we graduate from sonship into friendship with God. Yeah. Number three. We must continue to crave for fresh baptism of the spirit of obedience to live a godly life. I will put my spirit within you, Ezekiel 36 and verse 27. It will cause you to walk in my status you shall keep my judgments and do them by the ministry of the spirit of obedience. 
the same at work in Christ. Who said in John 5 30? <coughs> I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, so I act. So I judge, and my judgment is true. Whatever the father said to him, he did. Literally. In John 8, verse 29, <coughs> he that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone because I do always the things that please him. Always. Right there where you are seated, receive again this morning a fresh baptism of the spirit of obedience. Yeah. So shall it be yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Some of the benefits of godliness include access to continuous flow of revelation. For the secret of the Lord is to them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 25 and verse 14. Access to continuous flow of revelation. By supernatural insight, Joseph secured his place in destiny. By supernatural insight, Daniel secured his place, his enviable place in destiny. By supernatural insight, We saw Job secure this glorious place in destiny. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my, my tabernacle, that opened unusual doors to my life. Pharaoh said, as much as God has shown you all this, there's no one as wise as you are, take over from me. The secret of the Lord is ever with them that fear him, and it will keep showing them his covenant. You won't miss your steps anymore. Yeah. Arise, shine, because your light is come. He said, a little one by revelation shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I will hasten it in his time. That is how revolutionary revelation can be when God opens a man up. You will not live a revelation dry life anymore. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Another benefit is peace, quietness, and assurance. Isaiah 32, verse 17 and 18. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever. Godliness guarantees quietness and assurance. And my people shall dwell in peaceable habitation, in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. That's the work of righteousness. It establishes strange order of peace. Strange order of peace. You shall not lose your peace anymore. Yeah. He said the wicked man runs when no man pursues him. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is no peace to the wicked, said the Lord. No peace. Isaiah 48 verse 22. Righteousness is our covenant access to a world of peace, quietness, and assurance forever. How many want to have that kind of lifestyle? Peace, quietness, and assurance forever. Now, today marks the end of the plague of fear in your life. Yeah. 
by the anointing today, every yoke of fear that brings men into a snare is destroyed in your life. Yeah. Well, like we have said over and again, righteousness enhances supernatural breakthroughs. If you consider my servant Job, there is none like him on the earth, and he became the greatest of all men in the East. Man that feared God and stood evil, a perfect man. What? Perfect man, Old Testament? That's what God said. Perfect man, Old Testament? That's what God said. And he grew to become the greatest of all men in the East. Yes, grew some challenge, but <laughs> restored triumphantly. And he had twice as much as he had before. He was still above everybody in double fashion. Now, the aftermath of this experience will be your no limit order of breakthroughs. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. And that's where you are going. Yeah. And you must get there. Yeah. You shall get there. Yeah. And you must get there. When somebody is struggling in Southwest and a core of authority is using her to push. A core of authority. Amen. Amen. You will not be pushing with your head to move forward anymore. Breakthroughs become your natural lifestyle. Yeah. As long as you are keeping company with God, every door that lifts up their head for God lifts up their head for you. Yeah. I once tried to illustrate that if you are in a convoy with the presence of a, of a nation, everybody that salutes the convoy salutes you. You are not saying, salute me now. No. You are in the company that entitles you to that salute. But can two work together and say they be agreed? So a holy God cannot keep company with an holy son. An unholy son. So when you keep company with God, breakthrough becomes your natural experience. You are not struggling. The sea saw God in the midst of Israel and gave way. What's happening? He said, tremble thou at the presence of God. So, carrying God's presence makes you a breakthrough entity. Hallelujah. Carrying God's presence makes any believer a breakthrough entity. And that will be your experience from now. Yeah. Job kept working with God in his crisis, in his trauma, and when it was time, the gates lifted up their head, and Job recovered his destiny in a double fashion. Some here may also have been uh, uh, challenged grievously at one point or another. You are coming out gallantly. Amen. I said you are coming out gallantly. Amen. You are coming out gallantly. Amen. Don't pitch your tent against God or you'll be grounded for life. Nobody can manage your life better than God. If you have maintained your company with God, you may not have suffered the things you suffered. Now, renew your union with God and see how those challenges will disappear like a dream of the night. No one here will be identified with defeat anymore. No one here will suffer a setback anymore. No one here will struggle for survival anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand of praise.
When you pick any form of medication, you find some things inscribed on them to tell, let tell you the content, what makes of this uh, medication. This looks like an innocent <laughs> vegetable oil or something, but what is inside it? Now, listen to this. David was anointed with, his, with oil in the midst of his brethren, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. So the holy anointing oil is a carrier of the spirit of the Lord. And the spirit of the Lord is a yoke destroyer. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to manifest the following virtues. To preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So the spirit of the Lord enforces our liberty from all satanic holds on our life. Therefore, as the bottles of air you have brought is blessed and proclaim the holy anointing oil, it shall go forth to destroy every yoke hanging around your life. Yeah. Everybody's spiritual life shall be liberated this morning. Yeah. Everyone's social life shall be liberated this morning. Yeah. Everyone's business and career shall be liberated this morning. Yeah. Everyone's physical body shall be liberated this morning. Every besieged family shall be liberated this morning. So the holy anointing oil is ordained for our liberty from all satanic captivities. And it shall come to pass in that day that the body shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. Whatever makes people ask where is your God is a yoke and that yoke shall be destroyed today. Whatever represents generational cause upon any life is a yoke and that yoke shall be destroyed today. Yeah. Whatever makes life meaningless to any individual here is a yoke, and that yoke shall be destroyed this morning. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So what is in the oil? Say with me, the power of God that destroys yokes. The power of God that destroys yokes. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. What is in the oil? Say with me, the healing power of God. As this oil comes on your head today after it has been blessed, every assault on your head comes to a final end. It's going to happen instantly. It's going to happen like a dream of the night. Yeah. And it's happening now. Yeah. Whatever sickness or disease came with you to this service shall not return back home with you. Yeah. What is in the way? Say with me, the breakthrough power of God. Say aloud, the breakthrough power of God. David was anointed in chapter 16. He brought Goliath down in chapter 17. He became a national hero as a teenager. Now, as this oil comes on your head, everything resisting your glorious destiny in Christ shall be blasted forever. Yeah. They shall be blasted forever. Yeah. Everything resisting your glorious destiny in Christ 
shall be blasted off your path forever. He was anointed with oil in chapter 16. The king said to his father, please let your son come and stay with me. For he has found favor in my sight. He was anointed in chapter in verse 13. He, he obtained unbelievable favor in verse 22. What? By this anointing, the kind of favor you never imagined in your life will locate you this week. The kind of favor you have never imagined in your life will locate you before Shiloh. Marital favor will locate you. Career favor will locate you. Business favor will locate you. All you need is put your expectation in place and you have committed God to perform his word. Thank you, Father. And what more, we have the exemption power of God in the oil. Say with me, the exemption power of God. As they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch no man anointed and do my prophets no harm. Every evil that touches others in the world will never touch you again. No armed robbers will dare your dwelling place. No kidnapper will dare your children. No kidnapper will dare your spouse. Untimely death shall not be mentioned in your household. By this anointing, God will establish your exemption right. Amen. Lift up your right hand and bless the name of the Lord, everybody. If anything came across to you, give him thanks for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Very quickly this morning before we administer the mystery of the anointing oil, you are here in church and you are not born again yet, I'd like to pray with you because that's where the overcomer's life begins. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world and he overcomes by faith. You want to be a beneficiary of the kingdom of God, both in the now and in the hereafter. Salvation is your assets. You want your sins forgiven this morning. You want your name written in the book of life. You want to be listed among the overcomers in life and enjoy eternity at the end of your journey with Christ in heaven. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. I'll pray with you right now. God bless you. You want Jesus to forgive your sins. You want to become a child of God this morning. Please stand to your feet. It's your time for a turnaround. It's your turn for a turnaround. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up. Wherever you are, get up on your feet right now. Wherever you are, get up on your feet right now. New birth is not an ideology, it's an experience. Wherever you are, stand up to your feet. And God bless you as you do. Number two, please remain standing. There are also people here today that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. You want to stage a comeback to Jesus? You want to experience a new today. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. Everyone standing up, both in the first and second call, please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Please move to the nearest eye to where you are. Some church officials are beckoning to you right now. Please move out there in the name of Jesus. Shall we at the same time bow our heads now for prayers, all of us who are standing and lift up your right hand to heaven as a sign of surrender unto God. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, 
I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them into your kingdom. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered until the day of his appearing. You will live this life triumphantly to the end. You will make heaven at the end of your journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. George, give the Lord a big hand. And praise to the Lord for saving this soul. In Jesus' name. Please complete your sleeps so we can have access to your contact address and be in fellowship with you and help us of your faith. Be reminded of Believer's Foundation class that holds every Monday. You'll be contacted today to show you which one is nearest to where you live. We have them in about 10 locations across Lagos and Nottam. Shall we all rise, please? Please take up your bottles. You have heard the word. And now it's time to administer this mystery. Thank you, Jesus. You came with your body. Please know that the third Sunday of every month is our special anointing service in all our churches around the world. Always be reminded, please. This shall be an holy anointing unto me throughout your generation. So it's not an Old Testament phenomenon. Its effect, its impact is forever. Exodus 30 and verse 31. The effect of this will be made fully manifest in your life today. <laughs> Lift these bottles up, everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ, the content of your bottles is declared the holy anointing oil. <laughs> The yoke-breaking power of God resides in this oil from now. Yeah. The healing power of God resides in this oil from now. Yeah. The power in this oil will destroy the siege of fear in anyone's life. The yoke of sin and ungodliness shall be destroyed today. Yeah. I decree that the content of this oil shall be the spirit of obedience in your life. Yeah. The power of God that sanctifies resides in this oil from today. Yeah. Everybody's taste for ungodliness is declared destroyed today. Yeah. Your taste for godliness is revived today. Yeah. Evil shall not have any hiding place around your life anymore. Yeah. Whatever sickness came with anyone into this service shall not return back home with you. Yeah. They are declared destroyed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All that believe in these prophetic proclamations in line with scriptures, put a little of this oil upon on your fingertips and straight to your forehead and begin to appropriate your own deliverables. Begin to appropriate your own deliverables. Whatever you don't want to see anymore, you won't see it. Everything you have been longing to see will come your way right now. Every burden of the wicked on your shoulder is destroyed. 
every yoke of the enemy on your neck is destroyed. Your liberty is established today. Every ungodly taste is destroyed. And your taste for godliness is revived. Proclaim your liberty. Proclaim your liberty. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. In accordance to the mystery of Matthew 3, 11 and 12, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me who baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor, and we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. He will thoroughly purge his floor, and we are the temples of the Holy Ghost. He will gather the grace to the Ghana, and born of the chaff, with unquenchable fire. Whatever represents a chaff of hair inside anyone here that may be behind our misbehaviors will be burnt with unquenchable fire. Every taste for ungodliness as we take a shot of this oil, you can't sweep the inside without getting inside. We have an army of sanctuary keepers here. They do a lot of job outside, but they do the one inside. The one outside cannot impart on the one inside. It has to be done. As you take a shot of this oil, every planting of the devil behind your ill health, your weakness, shall be burnt with unquenchable fire. Every chaff of hair behind your barrenness shall be destroyed with fire. Every poison you may have taken, whether in your dream through diabolical means or by some wicked hands around you, whatever they may have served you that is behind the trauma in your system shall be burnt with unquenchable fire. All that believe in this mystery, take a shot of this oil and believe God for your total liberty. Cover your bottles. Lift up your two hands to heaven and celebrate God for the encounter of today. 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 Celebrate Jesus for the encounter of today. Lift up your two hands and begin to appropriate what you have received of the Lord from the encounter of today. Call your deliverables by faith. Call your deliverables by faith. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. Oh, it's my turn at last. I celebrate you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering. Amen. Let's praise him. As God touched you today, as God touched you today, have you heard his word today? Have you received his word today? Now, believe that he has empowered you to manifest it. Whatever word you receive and believe, you are empowered to become. Well, your story has changed. Those who know you before, they will know now that you are a new man. You are a new woman. You have stepped into a new realm. Come on now, praise him. Praise him. My life around. Jehovah turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. 
Jehovah has the final. Jehovah, my life, Jehovah turns my 